Okay, welcome back. We had uh, in our previous session seen the basic building block of a device which is MOSFET. Uh, this uh, session we will be concentrating on how to find out the current versus voltage characteristics of a device which is basically current versus voltage. That means, if we apply a gate voltage source and a drain voltage, how can you predict how much amount of current is flowing through the device? That is the main motivation for this part of the lecture. We primarily make two important derivations or observations and these observations are underlined as 1 and 2 here. If you look at the current here, which is basically current as I defined with you that the current while can we have two types of currents, we have drift as well as diffusion. We will be concentra concentrating here on the drift uh, current, which is primarily due to the presence of electric field. So, when you have electric field, electrons or holes in the electric field, they will be having a force attached to it, uh, because of which they will be moving from point A to point B. Then we define the current to be charge flowing per unit area per unit time. With that basic knowledge, uh, we derive that current flowing I equals to Q into V, where V is the velocity of the charge carriers, V is the velocity of the charge carriers and Q is the charge density. So, this is charge per unit area, right? this is charge density, right? which means that if you assume say a group of charges, which is electrons moving at the rate of 5 meters per second, let us suppose 5 meter per second, right? 5 meters per second, then in one second, if I assume it to be a block of 5 meters dimension, I can safely assume that in one second, you electrons will be flowing by 5 meters, right? If you that, that is V, that if you multiply with Q, which is the charge, charge per unit area, then you get charge per unit area per unit time and that gives you the value of the current. So, current uh, gives you the value, which is therefore, for all practical purposes, we say current to be equals to Q into velocity V, right? So, that is uh, what we are referring to in this case. So, my job is to do what? To find out the current uh, charge per unit area and also to find out the velocity of the charge carriers. Now, <coughs> what, we, what, we, what we will do here is, we will ground both my source, which we generally do, ground our source, we also ground our drain, right? So, both the source and drain are grounded. So, there is no electric field in the longitudinal direction. So, I will define this to be as the longitudinal direction. So, there is no electric field in this direction. But we go on giving applied a gate voltage which is Vg. So, there will be electric field in the transverse direction, transverse is this direction. So, this is my longitudinal direction and this will be referring to as longitudinal tudinal direction and this is referred to as transverse uh, direction, right. With this, uh, let me see how it works out. We just now saw or we just now had a look that the gate voltage at which the channel is formed is defined as my threshold voltage. So, if you look at the underlined part in this presentation, that gate voltage at which the channel is just formed is referred to as the threshold voltage, right. So, we say that the onset of inversion has taken place at which place? At that value of gate voltage when it is equal to the threshold voltage of the device. So, typically let us suppose I have an NMOS enhancement mode MOSFET enhancement mode, then I will have a threshold voltage VTH of approximately equals to say 0 0.5 volts, which means that after 0 0.5 volts only a channel will be formed between source and drain, right. The problem however, here is that you will not only give a gate voltage just equals to threshold voltage, but you will like to give a gate voltage slightly larger than that, right. And why and how we will see in subsequent slides. But if you give gate voltage greater than threshold voltage, right, out of that extra voltage which is available to you some of it falls on the gate voltage. I will give you an example. Let us suppose I apply a gate voltage of 1 volt and your threshold voltage was equal to 0 0.5 volt. Then out of the 1 volt given by the gate, 0.5 volt is just utilized to form the channel, right. So, how much extra voltage is available at the silicon silicon dioxide interface? It is approximately equal to 0 0.5. So, we define Vgs minus Vth, right, which is this one as the available gate voltage to the channel. That means, a charge carrier or uh, once the inversion has been formed, electrons in assuming it to be an n channel enhancement mode MOSFET, electrons will actually see a voltage of V g s minus V t h and therefore, the inversion charge will be actually proportional to this potential, right. Just like in a simple parallel plate capacitor. Therefore, we can define Q that is the charge 
per unit area right is equals to a charge this is actually charge per unit length this is charge per unit length right is equal to width width of the device is along this direction so this is your w this is your l between this point and this point so you have w into c ox so c into v q into q equals to cv so this is basically c into v this is charge per unit area so this is charge per unit area right into voltage what is the w value w value is in meters so this meter cancels with one more meters q into v is equals to uh, q sorry uh, c into v c into v is equals to uh, your charge and therefore there was charge per unit meter is basically the amount of charge which is available to you so q is equal to this value is basically uh, vgs minus vth vgs minus vth is also referred to as overdrive right it is also referred to as overdrive now let us consider that i have applied a drain voltage now till this much time there was no drain voltage now i apply a drain voltage keeping my source uh, uh, to be equals to grounded and gate voltage above threshold so above threshold means channel is already been formed now when i apply a drain voltage a positive drain voltage please understand this n plus p region right can be replaced by a diode which is something like this this is n, n plus region this is p region right i can replace this by a diode so if i apply a positive voltage here i am basically reverse biasing the diode which effectively means that there will be depletion region on this side which was initially like this when you didn't apply a bias now becomes something like this so when you apply the gate voltage when you apply a drain voltage which is very high that the depletion region starts to eat away into the channel and therefore so initially what was happening initially if you had this uh, as your oxide thickness here and this was your metal layer here the and this was source and this was drain right the layer of the inversion layer was perfectly like this it was exactly equal as you move from source to drain exactly the same because source is grounded drain is grounded there is no potential in this direction therefore there is nothing as happening now what has happened is since you have reverse bias the drain to the channel you have actually added a large amount of depletion region near the drain end and therefore there is a depletion region eats up into the channel this phenomena is referred to as pinch off right so there is a pinch off of the channel taking place here what approximations we are taking we will not go into details of this one one is the gradual channel approximation which we assume that that the longitudinal direction electric field electric field this is e x and this is e y e x is much smaller as compared to e y this e x is much smaller as compared to e y this is known as gradual channel approximation right please understand this idea will only hold for long channel devices when your why long channel devices why because when your l is large right voltage so, so if this is source and drain and if this is grounded and if you apply one volt here and say this is one micron then what is the electric field one electric field will be one volt divided by one micron which is basically 10 to the power 6 volts per meter will be electric field but if you reduce the dimensions and say make it 0 0.1 micron 0 0.1 micron then this becomes 10 to the power 7 volts per meter which means the electric field starts to increase which means this electric field starts to increase then this gradual channel approximation will not hold good so gradual channel approximations are only available or only important for long channel devices we also assume that this thickness of the charge is almost zero and this is known as ch charge sheet approximation or charge sheet model that means the thickness of the inversion layer is so small i can consider it to be a single layer or a single thickness the thickness is very very small right so you will have how many dimensions one l and you, you will have one w in this direction right so the area under the gate will be w into l width into length right all this area will be filled by a thin sheet of electron now at any point in the channel now what was my assumption that i have applied a drain voltage here vd right i have applied a source voltage which is grounded so i had my pinch off in this direction right which means that as i move from source to drain in x direction there will be change in potential because this is at zero say this is at 0 0.5 volts or 1 volt let us suppose right let us suppose let us suppose i have a drain here 
I have a source here and this is at 1 volt right and this is what is happening here. Now, as I move from source to drain, I actually see the voltage going on increasing almost like a potential divider right. So, this will have 0 0.1, this will have 0 0.2, so on and so forth till I reach 0 0.9 and then 1 volt, which means that an electron lying here will see 0.7 or 0.8 volts, whereas electron lying here will only see 0.1 volt available to me. And therefore, electron at this place will be shifted more in the up and this will be whole depletion here will be shifted more towards the, the bottom. Therefore, what we do? We say that therefore, effective value of charge density at any point x, the charge density will be V g s minus V t h will always be there. You have to subtract how much? V x, which is nothing but the approximate value of voltage at that particular point by virtue of the channel potential. That will also get subtracted from the V g minus V t h. Is it okay? Which effectively means that as you move from source to drain, source to drain, this V x will go on increasing, which effectively means that Q x will go on decreasing, which means that as you move from source to drain, there will be reduction in the channel charge density. And therefore, there will be thinning of the charge sheet uh, inversion layer and there will be thinning taking place from x to y. Now, it is very simple current was equals to this into velocity. So, what I do I this multiply with velocity v here and I get the current. Why is a negative sign? Why? Because very simple electrons moving in one direction the conventional electron the conventional current will be flowing in the opposite direction. Therefore, I have a negative sign available with me. Now, v uh, by your basic uh, fundamental principles of semiconductors we know that v which is the velocity of the charge carriers v will be given as mu into E, where mu is defined as the mobility of the charge carriers right, mobility of the charge carriers from basic device equations. E is given as minus dv dx right, why minus dv dx? Because you see very well that if elect if the voltage is increasing in this direction right, is increasing in this direction which means that I have low voltage on this side and high voltage on this side, electrons will be actually moving in the opposite direction. Why? Because electron has got a negative sign to it. Voltage is increasing in this direction, but the electrons will be moving in the opposite direction. Your electric field will be therefore equals to minus dv times dx, which is minus of dv dx, right? It is for electrons. Therefore, if I if I multiply this, so if I put this is what I am saying, mu into minus dv dx, so that minus and minus sign will get cancelled out with each other. I do what? I therefore replace this velocity by what? This velocity by mu into e and this e by minus dv dx. Once I do that, I get this final expression for ID, where W is the width, C oxide, ox, C ox is the oxide capacitance per unit area, this is the effective potential, this is the mobility of the charge carriers, in this case electron and this is dv dx which is nothing but the electric field. Now, as you very well know, I have to apply a boundary condition because this is primarily a, a differential equation which I needs to be solved. What are the boundary conditions? That at x equals to 0, I can assume that since source is grounded, it is a very uh, valid assumption at this stage that since source is grounded right is grounded I will have obviously V 0 equals to 0 and my V L will be equals to V D S. Why V L equals to V D S? Because that is the amount of voltage of like on the drain side. Just put those values here that means you will have x equals to 0 to L x equals to, when you integrate from 0 to L you also integrate from 0 to V D S. So, at L the voltage was equals to V d s at x equals to 0 source side your voltage was equal to 0. Integrate this point assuming that the current is constant obviously current continuity has to be maintained. I get an expression which is something like this quite interesting expression which is in front of you which is I d equals to mu n w by l c ox V g minus V t h which is the overdrive multiplied by V d s minus V d s square by 2 right. Also please uh, refer to this point that w by l is also referred to as aspect ratio of a device right. So, I get this expression. If I get this expression if I want to plot it what should I plot it? If I plot I d versus V d since this is a parabolic equation because it is V d s square and if you plot it this if you see this graph and if you have, if you plot between V d s and I d the drain current versus drain to source voltage then I will get a parabolic profile here parabolic uh, because it is V d s square. So, V d s square we will get across V d s square we will get parabolic, but quite interestingly higher the value of V g s right higher will be the value of I d. So, higher the value this is quite interesting higher the value of this V g s higher will be the value of I d and that you can see 
in the next slide that as we increase the v so this this so this is vgs minus v, vth1 this is vgs2 minus vth2 and this is vgs3 minus v, vth vth which means that threshold voltage is constant of course but i am changing the gate gate to source voltage from gate vgs1 vgs2 and vgs3 once you are doing that you are effectively increasing the overdrive and therefore a the current is also increasing so you see for the same value right higher the gate voltage higher will be the current higher the gate voltage higher will be the current higher the gate voltage higher will be the current right so on and so forth this is this is what 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 i get from this expression now if you want to calculate the peak value of the parabola then i define i del id del vds so what you do is you just differentiate this equation just differentiate this equation and what you get out of it is basically that the peak will occur where at vds equals to vgs minus vth so please understand very very important property that the peak is the point at which the drain current or the drain to source voltage loses control over the charge carrier's flow i'll give you an explanation what do i what do i mean by that so the peak occurs where at that value of drain to source voltage at which vgs is egs minus vth that means higher the value of overdrive the higher will be the value of your pinch off this this point is also referred to as saturation point saturation point or even a pinch off point so i've got few names to it but this is the value of voltage at which the pinch off will take place saturation will take place and this is basically a parabolic profile which you get in front of you right we'll discuss that later on but let us see at vds equals to vgs minus vth if you replace therefore in this equation in this which equation in this equation what will you replace you replace vds by vgs minus vth then i end up having this equation available to me and this is quite interesting that the maximum value of the drain current id max is mu n c oxide w by l vgs minus vth whole square now you see that if you would have followed this equation this equation even after pinch off point your vds square by 2 would have exceeded and the value of current would have dropped that's what i'm showing here the value of current would have dropped why because vds is increasing beyond a particular point vds square by 2 will increasing will be increasing much faster rate and therefore this term will be larger and therefore id will start to fall down whereas what actually happens is beyond pinch off there is no vds term here there is no vds term which means that the drain current is independent of the drain to source voltage and therefore drain current is constant so I, I get a constant drain current available to me and it is given by this expression mu n c oxide w by 2l vgs minus vth whole square right this region beyond which your saturation takes place is defined as my saturation region right this is known as saturation region and we will define this to be as the where i versus v voltage is a linear graph we define this to be as a linear region right this is a non linear we will not name it at this stage this is non linear and this is basically deep triode i will explain these this points as we move along right i'll just give you a brief insight into two important properties of uh, uh, two important properties here uh, we will discuss this point later on in a much more detail but let me give you a brief idea here before we move forward uh, and see the transfer so this is basically drain voltage versus drain current right so this is drain voltage versus drain current and this is iv characteristics if you if you go back and if you as i discussed with you if you look at the slide here you will see this is how it looks like right how it looks like so this is vgs1 vgs2 vgs gs3 and vgs3 s3 is greater than vgs2 is greater than vgs1 as you can see here so if you just concentrate here then you see vgs3 is much more steeper as compared to vgs2 as compared to vgs1 vgs3 will be much more steeper steeper means with a small change in vds i get a large change in id which means the on resistance offered is much much smaller in case of uh, vgs3 as compared to vds so the r on 3 will be smaller than r on 2 smaller than r on 1 where at this this region where there is a linear region of operation so if i bias my device here by applying proper vds i can use it as a voltage variable resistor i go on changing the voltage of gate to source voltage and i get various r on values available to me 
So you can see again just simply changing the value of gold voltage to VGS1 to VGS2 to VGS3, my R on gets changed, right. My R on will therefore be defined as will be defined uh, in, in all practical purposes, the R on will be defined as uh, is 1 upon mu n C oxide W by L into VGS minus VTH, right. This is my on resistance. So you see R on is therefore inversely proportional to VGS minus VTH. Higher the value of overdrive, lower is the value of your on resistance, right. So, this is quite interesting observation which you should see. Let us come to the transfer characteristics, just give you a brief insight into what this is. It is basically between drain voltage ID versus gate voltage VG keeping fixed VDS, VDS is fixed let us suppose. Then if you plot, this is basically log axis and this is your linear axis, you will see that unlike the requirement which I have got, which means that at threshold voltage the current should fall to 0. So, if you plot, ideally if you plot it, I should get something like the drain current if I plot versus gate voltage, then at threshold ideally I should get something like this. At threshold the current should go down to 0 and above threshold the current above 0, which is quite an interesting idea that this is the ideal, ideal case which I am trying to follow, but in reality it will not like that there will be a smooth transition at the threshold voltage and therefore, the device is said to be on even when your VGS is less than VTH threshold voltage. My understanding till now was that if you want to switch off the device make VGS less than VTH absolutely true, but if you keep it just less than VTH suppose your VTH is 0.5 and you keep it 0.499 then also as per my uh, previous discussion it should be off, but now what we see is no there is some continuity in the drain current and therefore, there will be some flow of charge carriers even at that particular point of time fine and that is known as sub threshold region of operation, sub threshold region of operation and it is given by uh, under the fact that when you have strong inversion which is this is surface potential, surface potential is nothing but at this stage assume it to be channel potential, whenever channel potential is larger than twice the Fermi potential plus the applied voltage we define that to be as a strong inversion case right and we define that to be as the onset of strong inversion. So, you see psi s is the surface potential, phi m is the is the difference between the intrinsic level of the Fermi level and we assume that del phi to be approximately equals to 6 phi t, phi t is the thermal equivalent voltage available to me. So, this is approximately equals to 26 millivolt at 300 Kelvin for all practical purposes. So, 6 times of phi t is approximately 130 to 135 millivolts available. So, if you are able to make your device by 135 millivolts higher than the twice uh, Fermi potential 2 phi f, I will get a strong inversion available to me right at that stage we do it. So, if I move to sub threshold I will have a very very low current if I move because you see this is a log axis. So, just so if this is this is your strong inversion this is your moderate inversion and therefore, suddenly there is a fall in the current and the current falls down drastically. So, if you want to operate it as switch you have to switch your voltage from above threshold to below threshold, but then you have to ensure that it goes well below threshold to actually go into cutoff, is it okay? We define another important term known as sub threshold slope and it is defined as uh, the definition is something like this that for the amount of gate voltage required for a one decade drop in the current is defined as by sub threshold slope, which means that this is a log scale please understand. So, if this is a one decade drop in the current the amount of gate voltage required to do that. So, you have to what you have to do the gate voltage has gone below threshold as it just goes to threshold you go just below threshold you lower your gate voltage and then see as it drops from say 10 to the power minus 3 amperes to 10 to the power minus 2 amperes let us suppose sorry 10 to the power minus 2 amperes it drops to 10 to the power minus 3 amperes right. As it drops from 10 to the minus 2 to the minus 3 the amount of gate voltage required to do such a change is defined as threshold slope and it is referred to as millivolt per decade. DEC millivolt per decade. Ideally, uh, as I discuss with you, uh, the the value of the voltage which is given is in in sub threshold. I will not go into details of it, but I will just write down for you. I get exponential exponential VGS divided by n k t by q, right? I get one minus x one minus exponential 
right uh, exponential uh, minus v d s by n k t by q right and then uh, we we close it um, saying that is 1 plus lambda times v d s right you can even remove this point no issues uh, you can what you can do is you just remove this point and we will have just the vds values available here so what you can do here is i will define ideas ideas equals to vds so if you look at this whole issue here or the whole point here the whole point which i wanted to uh, mention in front of you is that with this idea if you find out del id del vgs then approximately you get this as expression you get n kt by q ln of 10 this n varies from uh, 1 to higher value for ideal case n equals to 1 right for ideal case n is equal to 1 when n is equals to 1 i get s to be equals to 60 millivolt per decade at n equals to 1 which means that i will require 60 millivolt of gate voltage swing in order to change the current by one decade right so this is the whole explanation or idea of a sub threshold design or sub threshold slope right with this uh, we therefore just remember it for your case we have got id equation this is the id equation at saturation right we will the saturation will take place at this region when vds is greater than or equal to vgs minus vth we define it to be as onset of saturation before that it is the linear region where current is a strong function of vds so if you see when vds is small this is very very small so therefore when this is very small id is directly proportional to vds and therefore i have a ohmic ohmic law so it is straight line which you see when vds becomes still smaller and in fact it is much smaller than this thing in fact it is the, uh, the equation is vds is should be less than equals to 2 vgs minus vth when this is the notation then what we define is to be as a deep triode region right deep triode region and you will have certain issues available there right i uh, will not discuss that so at this stage uh, to just to recapitulate and this, this was r on value which we discussed in our previous slides to recapitulate let us see what we have seen at least for this one we have seen that the device can mean working in saturation in linear region it can also operate in deep triode region for saturation region gate to source drain to source voltage should be greater than vgs minus vth at this stage the drain loses control over the charge carrier only the gate voltage plays a role so if you want to change the on resistance of a device just change the overdrive voltage and you can automatically get a variable values of the on resistance we also look into the linear region that it will be following the ohms law and uh, there will be a direct dependency of id with respect to vds and the on resistance will be as i discussed with you inversely proportional to the overdrive voltage with this knowledge let me recapitulate the whole slide slow we have just now seen basic structure of a mos how a mosfet works types of mosfet we also looked into the fact how it works as a voltage control switch we also look at the voltage variable as a resistor and since they are fabricated on the same chip p mos and n mos i require an n well process or a twin tub process we can actually look into this twin tub process from any of the uh, twin tub process from any of the previous NPTEL courses uh, or your uh, books or standard books and this is also a methodology by which you can fabricate PMOS and NMOS. As I discussed with you linear region transistor, uh, transistor acts as resistor uh, while in saturation it will work as a current source. What is a current source? Fixed current with varying value of VDS. So what do I mean to say? That means if I have a MOSFET here, I have a MOSFET here right. If I go on varying the value of VDS nothing happens to the current remains constant so current is independent of the external applied voltages so ideal current source will have output impedance infinitely large which basically means that del vds del ids will be infinite will be equals to infinity right and true also why because if you change this vds value large i will not get no change in the value of id so del id will be approximately equals to zero and therefore this will be close to infinity so therefore mosfet behaves as a current source in saturation as a resistor in the nonlinear region uh, we have also seen what do you mean by sub threshold slope and what do you mean by the uh, steepness in the sub threshold slope how do you define sub threshold slope right and how is it dependent on the value of the threshold voltage with these few words i will just uh, conclude this this lecture for your understanding thank you